Hello guys, and welcome back to another bucket plugging tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to make your own custom tools. This is a really neat thing, and it really allows you to get creative. So let's jump right into it. The first thing you're going to need to do is make a way for your players to get a custom tool. Now all this custom tool needs to have is either a lore or a display name that you can compare all the tools to. So this is going to be the same for every single one. So I have made a diamond pickaxe with the name Diamond Drill. So that will be the name of my tool. If you want to use an item that is not already a tool, like let's say for example you want to use green dye, something random that players wouldn't really use so you could give them a custom resource pack whenever they join the server and it would turn that item into a tool, you can still make it look like the player is breaking the block if you send them packets of the broken block that they're currently mining. Um, if you don't know how to send packets, don't worry about it. We're not going to be doing that in this tutorial. It's way more, way more complex. But if you know how to send packets, you can make anything your own custom item. But if you don't know how to do that, you're going to have to stick with a vanilla tool and just change the name like I'm doing here or add a lore. But anyways, after you've done that, you're going to want to make a listener class. And we're going to be detecting whenever the player breaks a block. So we're going to make an event handler. And we're going to name it on break. If I could type. And we're going to be checking for the block break event. So I'm going to go ahead and make a few variables here. The first one is going to be a variable for our player. There we go. The second variable is going to be whatever item the player is holding. So we're going to make an item stack. And we're just going to name this, we'll name it tool. And this is going to be from the player's inventory and we're going to get the item in their main hand. Alright, now that we've done that, I want to go ahead and get a variable for the name of this tool so we can compare it against the name that I gave it right here. So for this, I'm going to do string, and we can name this tool name. And we want to get the item meta, and then we can get the display name from that. Now I want to make another string called to check, and this is just going to be diamond drill. And if you were doing a lore, you would do a list of strings and set it to the list of strings. Um, but that's all we have to do for this since I set it to the name. So. The next thing we want to do is compare these two names to make sure that they are the exact same. So we're going to do if toolName dot equals, and we're going to put in our diamond drill right here. So that would be to check. So now we know that this is the custom tool we're making, so we can add our custom code in here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the blocks from the world and just automatically add them to the player's inventory because I think that would be a cool thing for my drill to do. So if I go ahead here I can get the item drops from the event if I do get block dot get drops and I can also pass in the player's tool right here if I want it to apply any enchantments it has to that block which I think is a really neat thing but we have to save this to a variable. Now this returns a collection of item stacks. So we can name this drops and we can go ahead and set it equal to this right here. So now we have a variable that contains all the drops from this event but we don't want them to drop naturally so we have to go ahead and cancel that. So we have to set drops, set drop items, or no, yeah, that's right, that's it. We have to do set drop items false. And that will not drop the items in the world naturally. And then the next thing we need to do is add them to the player's inventory. Now, I'm not going to do this, but if you want it to be more clean and nice, what you would do is loop through the player's inventory yourself. And if the item stack that you're currently on is equal to the item stack you're currently adding to the player's inventory, then you can just add the values of those two item stacks together to make sure they don't go over the max stack size, of course. And then you can go ahead and do it like that. But I'm not going to worry about that. I'm just going to use the, the, the method called first empty from the player inventory class. So I'm going to go ahead and get an instance of that. 
and go ahead and get their inventory just like that. And I want to make a variable for the first empty slot. We can do that with this handy method named first empty. And I meant to put integer, not inventory. All right. And now we can go ahead and loop through the items inside of this collection list. So that's pretty simple. If you've been following along this tutorial series, I'm pretty sure you know how to do this by now. All right, and then we're going to make sure, of course, that the first empty is not negative one because that's what it returns if there is no empty slots. And if it's not, you just want to break this loop because I'm just going to delete the items. I'm not even going to worry about dropping them back into the world or anything. Um, we can go ahead and set here the item to first empty, and we can go ahead and get the item where it currently on. And that's it guys, you've made your own custom tool. It's uh, pretty simple. I'll go ahead and add that in there so we don't get any errors when I build. And I will see you guys in the server. Alright, so now we're in the game, so I can go ahead and give myself our diamond drill with fortune 10 and efficiency 100. And if you see here, I go ahead and mine this block. It gives me the diamonds right away. I don't even have to go pick them up. Now, you do see if I mine another one, it goes to the next slot. That's because I was using this method named first empty. As I said before, if you want to add the stacks to each other, you have to loop through it yourself and not use this method right here and just add the stacks if they're the same material. You guys can do it. I believe in you. If this helped you out, make sure you leave a like. And if you have any issues or any ideas for new videos, let me know down in the comments. And I will see you guys next time. Goodbye. Nice. The mutt's nuts, in fact.